Hey youth workers, welcome to the channel. If you're brand spanking new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and you will get videos like this in your inbox on a regular basis. And if you're a regular, thanks for stopping back by because, well, I love you. Today I want to talk to you guys about uh, the five misconceptions of youth pastors and how to overcome them. Um, youth pastors, um, this is, you know, not unfounded entirely, but I think there are some vast uh, misconceptions about youth pastors that um, that I think we that every youth pastor has to overcome some point in their career in youth ministry. And if you're just starting out in youth ministry, uh, this is going to maybe apply to you more because there are certain, you know, you're coming into something based on what that previous youth pastor maybe uh, did at the church. You're coming under those uh, ideas maybe. And if it was a really good youth pastor, well, then the expectations are high. If it was really bad youth pastor, well, then, you know, maybe they're not as high, but they're still there. But there are still perceptions based on their behavior, uh, which will then be translated over to you. So let's jump into it with this quote. Our understanding is correlative to our perception. Robert Delaney. Now, when we talk about perception, uh, perception really is reality. If you perceive something, if you don't have any other understanding, you haven't had a conversation with somebody, you are left to your perception of how you see something. Now, this relates to your senior pastor. This relates to your congregation. This relates to your students. This relates to everything that your understanding is based on perception. So when your pastor sees you in a certain mode or the congregation sees you in a certain way, that is their reality of you until you change it. Now say, Paul, why would I want to change people's perception of me? Well, it's real simple. Success. Success has a lot to do with perception, uh, how people view you. Uh, it relates to how much you trust somebody. It relates to how much responsibility you give somebody else or that is given to you. It's all based on how, how they're looking at you and how you live and how you or do all the things that you know you're supposed to do. And and there are the that's where we get these perceptions from. So as a youth worker, my encouragement to you is this: it doesn't matter how good you are until somebody perceives you differently. And to overcome these uh, these perceptions, uh, there will be some change required. So I'm just letting you know ahead of time that, you know, whether these apply to you or not, everybody has a perception. And those perceptions, if they're bad or if they're negative, you have to work on them to change them. Now, let's go ahead and start with the first misconception, and that is disorganized. Now, listen, these, once again, are not unfounded. There is some disorganization in youth pastors' lives for whatever reason. Now, some of this is based on age. Some of this is really, you know, relates to personality. Uh, some just has to relate to uh, a lack of skill. Uh, but either way, the perception that a youth pastor is disorganized is directly related to the trust that you receive. If you're not feel like if you don't feel like you're being trusted enough uh, with some things, it could be because you are disorganized. That you don't feel that that people around you don't feel like you have it together. You don't have an idea of where you're going, and that may be true. It may be true that you don't have an idea of where you're going, uh, but you can fix that. Okay, if you're disorganized, it means you don't know. Uh, you know, when, when the meeting is, or you're late to meetings, or you're, uh, you don't have the facts you need, or you didn't do your homework or your research on a particular project or an idea or an event, or you can't communicate well. Parents, this is a, a major one with parents, because if you have the perception of being disorganized, well, then guess what? There's a lot of chatter going on out there in the world about you being disorganized, if you didn't know that already, but you can fix that. That's a, that's a, I wouldn't say it's an easy fix, but you can start. Let me give you a little tool that I use. It's on my iPhone and there's a, a reminders app on just about everybody's phone of some kind that if, if you'll just pop in your reminders that these are important. These are important things. Remind yourself to do the calendar. Remind yourself of the dates. Remind, and in my phone, you can use uh, both by location or by date. So if I say, look, I have things going on in 2020, that, that date is in there. If I want to do it by location, like example, if you say, look, I have to pick up supplies. Well, if you're always driving by uh, a Walmart or some store that you normally go to to buy supplies at, well, then put that in there. And then when you pass, it will actually notify by location 
uh, when you're there that you're supposed to pick up the things you're supposed to pick up. That's an easy start to go ahead and start overcoming the perceptions of you of being disorganized. Now, listen, I can't organize your youth ministry for you, and I can't come to your office and, you know, rearrange your desk or things like that, which, by the way, would be helpful, by the way, if you cleaned your desk and your office. That would also, uh, um, you know, get rid of the fears that you're disorganized uh, if you had a more organized office. What I can do is put in your hands a resource that I developed last year called the My Youth Ministry Playbook. Now, the My Youth Ministry Playbook uh, that I put out last year was a huge success. So many youth workers benefited from it and uh, was able to get them on track because it's filled with all kinds of things that are going to actually help you organize your youth ministry, organize your process, right? Not just the stuff, but actually organize the process of doing your youth ministry well. Some of the things that are in the book are things just like a, a start here page. Where do I go? How do I start this at the beginning? Uh, there are articles in there uh, that I've written to help you organize. There are blank pages in there to give you a little space to dream. There are, uh, you know, a teaching preaching schedule that I offer you. There's a calendar, as you can see there at the very bottom, questions you should be asking, which is something a planner uh, does not do, but a playbook does because I want you asking certain questions at certain times of the year. And then in addition to that, I offer you a monthly to-do for every month. So you're going to be able to write down all those things that you're supposed to do within that month. They're going to make your programs happen. They're going to make uh, you know, the relationships happen. They're going to inform your parents, all those kind of things that you need to write down on a monthly basis, things you need to do. So guess what? Your parents, your pastor, your students, your congregation is going to get a vibe that you are more organized. Now, it's not just going to be perception that you're more organized. It's going to be a reality that you're more organized. And I would say that actually carrying around this book will certainly change the perception that you're not organized. If you're carrying around a My Youth Ministry playbook, what do you think people are going to say? They're not going to say, well, that person, they don't look like they have a plan. You're actually able to open up that thing and say, look, here's where I'm at month to month. Here's where I'm asking questions. Here's where I'm filling out forms. And once again, all this comes in addition, you get a PDF. So you can make as many copies of this as you want for you, your team, whatever. Uh, and uh, there'll be a link down in the description below. If this is something you say, Paul, I really could use this. Number one, as a tool for being organized, right? That's number one. You want to do ministry well. But number two, if you want to change the perception people have of you, then you're going to have this book to say, look, let me show you what I have going on here, not only to your students, but to your parents and your pastor and say, every week I'm showing up to staff meeting, I'm writing things down, I'm taking notes in here, but I have a plan moving forward to make this youth ministry the best youth ministry it can be. Now, there will be four more parts in this series uh, dealing with the perceptions of of youth workers and how you can overcome that. I'll be offering tools, things like that. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified when I upload these videos. I want to leave you with one last quote here from C.S. Lewis says, what you see and what you hear depends a great deal on where you are standing. It also depends on what sort of person you are. And that is from C.S. Lewis and the magician's nephew. So I would encourage you to think about and think through how people perceive you. What is the perception of your youth work? What is the perception of you as a youth pastor? And how can you change those things? How can you begin to take steps to say, look, that the way people perceive me has a lot to do with where people stand. Your pastor has a perception based on his position. Congregation has a, a, a perception of you based on their position. Students, parents, so forth have a perception of you. If it's not good, you can change it. Not just by buying my book or buying a resource, but you can change it by simply taking the time to reflect on how other people see you and then making small changes to get you where you should be. So you can get more trust, you can get more uh, responsibility and uh, get more kudos from the people around you. So that's a big plus. So guys, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate you being a part. If you're a regular, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Let us know you like the video and you want more of them. And I will catch you guys in the next video. We'll talk to you guys later.